Hello, I'm Pierre Lynch, and welcome to Overcast, the Chaga Sheet Podcast. Each episode, we bring you the latest insights, advice, and technical updates for the sheep industry. In this current episode, we switch back to health focus. With a lot of stock moving between farms and from livestock marathons on the farms, we catch up with Michael Gossing, head of sheep in Chagas, to discuss biosecurity risks posed when introducing new sheep to a flock. We move on to discuss quarantine procedure and mitigating strategies that can be applied on farm to maintain the existing flock health status. I'm joined now by Michael Gossing from Chagas. Michael, we see a lot of stock moving on the farms at the moment. We're in breeding season, a lot of breeding sales for rams and for females coming up. It does raise the whole issue of health status and flocks again, and it kind of comes back into focus. Maybe if we just take a few moments, what are the key risks of bringing in new animals or breeding animals onto farm dome from a health point of view for your flock? Okay, yes. Uh, so once you bring in an animal from outside your, your, your flock, there's a risk that that particular animal might bring in a disease or a parasite, an internal or external parasite that you currently don't have on your farm. So as there's a lot of stock moving at the moment, people are buying in rams and maybe replacing uh, females. Now is a good time to think about that. You could be doing everything right on your farm, um, managing all the diseases and and prevention measures, um, but your flock health status is only as good as the flock health status of the worst farmer that you buy stock in from. So it is, look, it's a risky period depending on where they come from. I suppose maybe, what are the couple of key areas that we see disease coming in on? Like, where are the ones we need to focus on? Yeah, so there's lots of, of diseases um, that can be bought in with sheep. So we have um, lameness conditions like foot rot and CODD, contagious ovine digital dermatitis. Those are highly infectious diseases which can spread very rapidly on through your sheep uh, if you don't already have them on your farm and you buy them in. We also have um, resistant parasites. So these are parasites that are resistant to a lot of the common drugs used to control them. So that's primarily stomach worms, but also liver fluke and maybe scab, sheep scab. And then we have abortive agents, uh, in particularly the high risk there would be the female sheep, the breeding sheep, and the biggest one there would be something like enzootic abortion. So that's where you buy in sheep that look perfectly healthy, but they carry that infective agent. And then when they're in your flock, they abort at some future date and then spread that bacteria throughout your flock and infect other sheep in your farm. We also have what we term iceberg diseases and iceberg diseases are diseases such as scrapie or OPA or Yone's disease. And these are diseases that you don't really, uh, that have long incubation periods. Um, So they're difficult often to identify. Sometimes there are no blood tests available and you buy in a sheep and it's maybe six months, 12 months, two years, three years down the road that you notice that there's something wrong with that particular sheep, that the symptoms of that disease manifest itself. And at that stage, the disease has really been spread throughout your flock. And that's why we call it an iceberg disease, because by the time you see the initial symptom um, of one or two sick animals in your flock, there's a whole load of, of disease after being spread under the water, so so to say, in the area that we can't see in what we perceive to be healthy sheep. And those are all sheep that are going to succumb eventually to those conditions. Like Michael, now some of them are kind of, well, not say obvious, but they're more easy to identify. But the latter couple you mentioned there have long incubation periods and are more difficult. They're hidden diseases in some ways until they manifest themselves. I suppose it kind of brings to the point, how do you mitigate some of that risk? How do we minimise that risk going on farm? So if we talk, for example, the lameness issues or the internal parasites, what can we do from a quarantine point of view to treat them? Yeah, so for the the, the lameness or the um, antimintic resistant parasites, um, it's simply a case of quarantining. Um, Okay, ideally as well, maybe looking at the, the source flock and, 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 and getting some information there. So the longer we can quarantine those animals, the better. From a lameness point of view, the ideal length of time probably would be somewhere around four weeks. That's not always practical. Um, 
but you know where possible four weeks to identify if those sheep are at some stage going to become lame and then treat them before they join your sheep when we're quarantining these animals what we're really talking about doing is keeping them in a separate field or in a shed away from your sheep from for a period of time so that if there is some condition there that develops that it hasn't had the chance to spread to the rest of your flock so that you can treat it and eliminate it before there's a risk of infecting your sheep so from a lameness point of view you know the longer the better up to about three to four weeks um, if they have a condition like CODD at that stage it should uh, basically rear its head and again liquidate obviously purchase and lame sheep is a no-no because Absolutely. It's, it's an obvious yeah. infection. So we want to avoid purchasing anything that's lame, but also we can have sheep that are clinically aren't lame, but are carrying the bug and will become lame in the next three or four weeks. And that's the reason why ideally we should be keeping them three or four weeks. From a parasite point of view, in terms of, of uh, importing antelmintic resistant parasites onto your farm. So those are stomach worms, liver fluke and scab, um, sheep scab. In those situations, it's about going in with a, with a treatment to eliminate what's inside them. So we're going with a clean out dose um, on those sheep. And really what we're trying to do there is to, to clean out what, what parasites are on and in the sheep. Um, and then we we'll keep them indoors for a period of time so that any eggs that are in the digestive tract from those parasite resistant um, or sorry, antelmintic resistant parasites um, are passed out in the shed and not on our pasture. So for most people, that's about bringing the sheep in, um, giving them a dose of Zolvex and an injectable ivermectin um, and also maybe a flucicide or possibly two if we're worried about fluc res flucicide resistance as well. And then keeping them in for 48 hours and turning them out onto a sheep where there have onto a pasture where there have been sheep in the past. I'm just conscious even it came up in the previous podcast with Ola, them sheep really shouldn't be exposed to pasture when they land off the trailer, be treated for worms and held in before they're introduced to your own ground. What, yeah, absolutely. What we're trying to do is we're trying to prevent the eggs from the resistant parasites in those sheep from getting out onto our fields. So for that reason, we're putting them into a shed, um, we're dosing them, treating them, then waiting for 48 hours for any eggs that those parasites have laid that are already in on their way out in the digestive tract to pass out into the, the slurry or the farmyard manure. And then we can dispose of that farmyard manure, compost it, bury it, um, you know, and when the sheep go out onto the pasture, then there should be very few um, remaining resistant parasites on them because we've used a product that we're, we're, we're quite confident will kill them. And I suppose the other thing you do, Michael, is you're buying yourself a little bit of time to maybe pick up on something you didn't see in the sales yard or on the farm you're buying them off. The role of inspecting stock when you're buying them too is important. There are certain things, healthy sheep you would look out for. There are certain things you mentioned not buying in lame sheep. Some of the other conditions you mentioned though aren't easy to physically identify. And even within, and you went through a quite comprehensively the quarantine program we have on farms from a biosecurity point of view the abortive agents the iceberg diseases how do you minimize the risk of bringing them into your farm we might talk mitigating strategies for them in a moment but how do you minimize that risk yeah so i mean the the way to minimize the risk in terms of of buying in is is to to reduce the amount of buying in you do um so a lot of flocks that keep their own replacements will only be buying in rams, so that reduces the number of animals they buy in. The more animals you buy in, the greater the risk, because with every animal comes the risk of... of also, the number of flocks that you buy from. Um, so the more flocks you buy from, the bigger the risk. Um, and again, going back to that statement I made earlier, that your flock health status is only as good as the worst flock that from which you buy sheep. So really, if we're buying in replacement females we should be looking at a trusted source so that's somebody that we build up a relationship that we know what their flock health status is or, or that we've had a conversation with them about their flock health status and reduce the number of people that we're buying from so that that mitigates the risk while it, but it certainly doesn't eliminate it so if we want to eliminate the risk i suppose we need to stop buying in sheep altogether and for some people that's not practical so in that situation it's about reducing it to, to the minimum pro 
possible and then taking some steps when we bring the sheep onto our farm to try and further prevent um, diseases being brought on and I suppose that's the mitigation strategy yeah you're cutting down the risk by yeah. knowing where you're buying from yeah and just there's probably one element to that Michael that we might talk about probably doesn't happen to farmer level that's asking some of the questions what some of these farmer problems are what they're vaccinating for have they any issues with abortion there is a bit of a reluctance in asking them questions and getting that kind of detail maybe giving that kind of detail yeah, so I, it, I think it's very useful um, to walk around the flock. Um, so if, you, if, if it's possible to visit the flock, um, that you would see the other sheep on the farm, have a look and see in particular for lameness, and even if possible to identify some of the lame sheep and examine them just to make sure that they don't have CODD. Um, most sheep farmers have foot rot to some extent, but not every sheep farmer has CODD, so CODD is the one we really want to avoid. Um, talk to them about their parasite control program um, and see what what trenches are still working. You know, we want to try and avoid um, buying in sheep from flocks that are carrying triple resistance. Um, and then on the on the vaccination side, ask the questions: What are they vaccinating for? And very often, um, what farmers are vaccinating for gives you an indication as to what diseases are prevalent in the flock. Um, and and that'll, that'll give you a good idea between asking those few simple questions and visiting the flock and viewing the sheep, the other sheep, not necessarily just the ones that you're buying, but the other sheep in the flock will give you an idea as to the flock health status. Um, so you're, you're arming yourself with a bit more information. A bit more information, yeah. And look, at, there are cases where there are a lot of producers going out to the open market to buy Vaccination, I'm thinking from an abortive agent point of view, vaccination has a role to play. It becomes very relevant again at this time of the year. It is a good stage to maybe go back and look at some of the issues you may have had in your flock in spring and consult your vet about it, but there are a number of vaccines there that can mitigate some of the risk. Absolutely. So on the abortive agents, um, if you're buying in sheep, uh, I think it, it would be very wise to consider treating them um, against or vaccinating them against enzootic abortion um, and simply because the risk of buying an enzootic abortion into a clean flock um, can be quite high when you're when you're buying in from an unknown source and enzootic abortion is, is a very damaging and contagious condition if it gets into your flock um, so uh, that's the I suppose that's the main abortive agent that we would be concerned about buying in uh, there is another very common abortive agent called toxoplasmosis, but it is not a sheep-to-sheep -sheep disease. Um, so it, it's not something that you're going to probably buy into your flock um, and spread within a flock. It's something that's going to arise from contamination from cat's feces into the feed bedding um, or the pasture of the sheep that they're grazing. It's, it's a farm specific. Yeah. Maybe the caveat there with, it, with the enzotic. Um, for flocks that haven't vaccinated before, the first year they vaccinate is the entire flock, and then the females, because you will have yeah, many animals. Ab absolutely. So I mean, if you're if you're if you're buying in sheep, it is a good idea to put your flock on an enzootic abortion vaccine program, which is basically where you, in the first year, vaccinate all the sheep in your flock, and then subsequently just vaccinate your replacements. The vaccine is a one shot for life vaccine and what you're trying to do there is mitigate the risk of the disease coming into your flock and taking hold. Michael, I think you kind of went through there's been a lot of, it's probably no harm at this time of the year we're just finished weaning as well in flocks even flocks that aren't buying in maybe to take stock of the level of production during the year and look back at some of the losses maybe or some of the areas you can improve them because sometimes we can have these risks on farm without being aware of them I think you outlined some of them. Look there's plenty to focus on I think for the coming weeks you raised a couple of good points Having a plan in place is obviously very important. And there's perhaps some elements of that that might be farm specific. It's a good time to consult your vet. What is an appropriate quarantine program for your farm? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, very uh, a lot of people buying sheep don't think an awful lot about uh, the potential risk of buying in diseases. And we have seen um, from some of the examples of some of the farmers that we work with in Chagask on the Better Farm Program that when you buy in a condition like CODD or enzootic abortion um, or resistant parasites, 
um, that it has a significant effect on not only the production potential of your flock um, for a number of years, but also there's a huge cost in terms of, of, of uh, medical costs, in terms of veterinary medicine, but also in terms of labor and time, in terms of trying to, to deal with that subsequent infection afterwards. And for that reason, I think all farmers, whether you're buying one sheep or a hundred sheep onto your farm this year, should be thinking about having a good biosecurity program, which is aimed at really minimizing to the absolute best possible that you can um, the risk of, of, of not buying in a disease. So either, um, you know, whether that's identifying sources that you're pretty confident are, are, are very good from a flock head status and then taking steps to avoid mm. importing diseases where you can. So that's vaccination, quarantine and treatment in the case of parasites. Um, you know, and, and look at the one I suppose risk area that's always going to be there are some of these iceberg diseases, the likes of the Yones and the Scrapies and the OPAs and even the CLAs. Those are diseases that are difficult to identify. A short quarantine period is not effective at at at, at identifying them or removing them, and that's the risk, I suppose. And that's that's uh, perhaps with the known source and having that long term relationship. Absolutely, comes in. absolutely. So so knowing the the flock that you you're buying from having that relationship is probably the best way of mitigating that even though you're never going to get down to a absolute possibility that you're not going to bite in once you buy in a sheep that risk is always there okay michael we might leave it there thanks sir. i think we've covered a lot of ground it should certainly be high on the list of priorities when you are considering buying in animals health status fortunate with these when they come into the flock they're there for a long time so it needs to be a priority michael thanks for your time thank you We'll have to draw the episode to a close at this point. I would like to thank Michael for taking the time out to join us. The whole area of biosecurity and quarantine procedures is an ever-developing field. It's a very important area that we need to focus more on. Your flock health status has a major impact on productivity and profitability. Michael outlined clearly at the beginning we need to be able to identify the potential risks new animals pose and have procedures in place to deal with them. and good quarantine protocols on farm is vital. Again, where possible, you have to buy stock, buy from a known source and ask questions off the flock health status of that farm. For any updates on the Chagas site, keep an eye on our Twitter page at Chagas Sheep. I'm Kieran Lynch. Thanks for joining us in this episode of Ovicast. Don't forget to subscribe and tune in to the next episode.